NFL Big Game Previews, week number eight. Not a whole lot of good ones this week. Not a whole no. lot at all. Uh, it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find information on, on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Go check that thing out. Let's jump right in. We're going to try and make this quick. We ain't going to waste your time because, God, it's some bad games this week. Uh, game number one. Good game. Real good, good game. game. Yeah, re- really good game. Uh, Saints at the Vikings. Vikings are a one-point favorite. The over-under is 52-and-a-half. Sunday, 7.20 p.m. on NBC. It's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, te- I mean, look, th- I think the Saints are probably one of the four best teams in the league right now. Correct. The Vikings are looking much better. They got three straight wins. Vikings are at home. Uh, the Saints' defense is terrible against the pass. Sure. Vikings sure. can throw the football. Absolutely. Uh, Alan Thielen needs one more game to break the uh, – Adam. Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen. What, uh, what did I say? Alan. Sorry. It's okay. My apologies. No, uh, he needs one more 100-yard game to break the NFL record, right? Yep. You think he gets it this week? Against the Saints? Yeah. Yeah, I think he gets That's, it. I think he does, too. I think he does, too. Um, look, this line opened up as a pick em. It is, it's as close to a pick as you're going to get. It's going to be one, yeah. one, one point, one way or another. Uh, both teams are four and two against the spread. Uh, Minnesota's four, two, and one against the spread. Um, but, man, like, this just looks like a completely even game. Like, all the stats just, it, it looks completely even. Uh, I like the Saints because they're nine and oh against the spread in October, the last three years. Like, this is the time of year when good coaching comes out. And, like, I love Mike Zimmer, but I still think they got a few things to work on. I think the Saints are rolling right now. That's right. So This is in my game on picks. Yeah, same I'm here. excited for same here. So, uh, Game number two, Packers at the Rams. The Rams are a nine-point fa- Nine points over Aaron Rodgers. Good gracious. This is the biggest dog that Aaron Rodgers has ever been. Over under 56 and a half. It's Sunday, 325 p.m. on Fox. It's in Los Angeles, California, in the Coliseum. Uh, the Rams, like, they are just obliterating teams. Uh, but still, that's a lot of points against Aaron Rodgers, isn't it? Yep. How do you feel about this game? It's in my gambling picks. Good gracious sakes, live in the morning. Uh Stats look relatively even for the most part. Uh, Green Bay averages more passing yards. Uh, the Rams average more rushing yards. Uh, both defenses, pretty good. Uh, I mean, Green Bay gives up more rushing yards, but they give up less passing yards. Like it, Green Bay gives up more points. Yeah, Green Bay does give up more points. Uh, they are giving up 24.7, no, I'm sorry, 24.0 points per game. The Rams are giving up 18.3. The Rams are scoring 33.6. That's it. And the Packers are scoring 24.7. That's it. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Green Bay's 3-2 and two straight up. Uh, well, 3-2-1. Two, and one, And the Rams are 7-0. and oh. I've heard it described when comparing the Rams and the Chiefs this year as the Rams kill you or the Chiefs kill you with just fire and all, like shock and all, just big explosive plays. Yeah. The Rams bleed you to death with a 1,000 paper cuts. They just... Six yards, nine yards, seven yards, you can't stop them. They, they're they going to score every possession, every drive. They're never going to punt. They're never going to turn the ball over. But it's not going to be fast. It's going to be slow. It's going to be methodical. And it's going to be painful. Yes. And I kind of like that analogy. This Rams team is really, really good. Yes, uh, yes they are. Yes, they are. And the Packers are, are a little bit better than I anticipated them being. Mm, uh, not but, not but as not, good as I anticipated them being. But not – not great. Oh, you thought they were going to be better than this? Well, no, but I, I guess you're right. I didn't think they were going to be. Well, I didn't think they were going to be good to begin with. I so they're they're about what you expected. Yeah, they're about what I expected. I guess. I don't okay. Know. Uh, Raven, the, the game number three. Ravens minus one at the Panthers. Now these are the three best games. We're stretching here, but okay. Yeah, Ravens these are, these at are, the Panthers. I guess these are good teams. Yeah, this uh, is a we, pretty. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm right. You're right. Panthers are home underdog. Right. Uh, over under is forty three and a half. Sunday, 12 p.m., CBS in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Baltimore, last week, a missed extra point away from going to overtime with the Saints. They've looked good. Their defense is awesome. They're only giving up 14.4 points per game. Uh, I mean, I mean these, these two teams look 
really similar. They look very, very. I mean, very the similar. Panthers give up way more passing yards per game. Correct. They they give up 260 passing yards per game at 7.3 yards per attempt. Uh, Baltimore gives up 190 and only 5.5 yards per attempt. So that's where you could get caught. Is like Joe Flacco could end up having you know. A big game. He could have a big game. He's got some receivers. Yeah. I mean, John Brown is playing out of this world. And that's that's why the Ravens are, you know, the slightest of favorites on the road. Correct. Is this in the game of fix? No. No. I, I stayed away from this one, too. Stayed away from it. If I had to. Man, I don't know. If I had to bet, I'd bet on the Panthers. I think. Man, I think. I mean, I'd a take, home dog? I think I'd just take the home team. Yeah. But. Home dog. That's hard to do. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, let's talk about some honorable mention games. Not not great, but Quick, worthy of quickly. Uh, Thursday, seven twenty p.m. on Fox. Dolphins at the Texans. Texans are a seven and a half point favorite. Over unders forty five and a half. Uh, that line just feels absurd. The Texans should not be seven and a half point favorites over anybody. You agree with that? No one. Uh, even if Brock Osweiler is the quarterback for the opposing team. Uh, Sunday morning, eight thirty a.m. on the NFL Network from London, England. The Eagles minus three and a half versus the Jaguars. Over under is 41. The Jags look like a dumpster fire right now. Um, I, this is in my gambling picks. Okay. So, you got anything to say about this one? No. No. <laughs> I am interested to see the Eagles and see how they rebound because they, I mean, they dumped a 17 point lead away at home in the fourth quarter. Yeah. That just, you don't do that in the NFL. No, it's, that's that's it's a weird. college move. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Uh, let's see. Browns at the Steelers. Steelers minus seven and a half. Over unders fifty and a half. Sunday noon I saw CBS this line game at nine this afternoon. It's jumped up that much. I saw this line at nine. Good gracious! You keep you keep yeah, talking. Yeah, on here this one says eight. Golly, that many people are are on the Steelers now. You keep you keep talking. People do not like the Browns right now for some no, reason. They shouldn't. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackson's. A Although I mean, look, the the Browns are two, four, and one. This is straight up nine and a half. Good lord, um, the Browns are are two, four, and one straight up, but they're five and two against the spread. Uh, they're plus ten in turnover margin, which is insane for a team that's only won two ball games. Uh, their defense looks okay. They're only giving up four point five rushing yards per attempt. They're only giving up six point six passing yards per attempt. They can't like, be five and two. They've got at least two pushes. This is uh, this one says five and two against the spread. No, last week was a push. It was a three point line everywhere. Oh no no no! It uh, uh, it closed at three and a half. Yeah, All it right. closed at three and a half. It was three okay. everywhere throughout the week. But this rolls off of uh, this is over at StatFox.com. dot com. So they okay. just they roll on that. Um, either way, like they're they're not terrible against the spread. No. It's just that they are losing games in, like, the most ridiculous ways possible. Nine and a half points too much. If it keeps going up, it keeps getting bigger. Yeah, I'm going to like that line. They'll they'll play the Steelers close. Yeah. They're going to play them close. They always do. That's what they do. I mean, they they got talent on the team. You are of the opinion that Hugh Jackson needs to be gone, right? Correct. We yeah. are a coach away from being decent. Yeah. It, is the coach on staff? Well, no, but, I mean, well, I mean I, he's I did, better you, than you. You had talked about Todd Haley. I didn't know well, if maybe. Well, Todd Haley, no, he won't be the coach of the future. He's He'll be the interim coach. He'll be the guy that once Hugh is finally fired. You don't think Jimmy Haslam would hire him? Uh, I mean, it depends on how he finishes. I, the guy that I think they need to hire is coaching in college right now. So uh, You can't just give that as a tease. Who? who? I think Baker's old coach. Every you think Lincoln not, Riley? Yeah, nine different NFL franchises have came out and admitted that they have called Lincoln Riley for consultation on their offense. The NFL is nine? going nine different NFL offenses have done that. Um, whoever gave that stat out has not released the names of the nine, but they have nine people that have confirmed they have talked to Lincoln Riley up in the off season about their offense wow. because that is the the direction. The NFL is going offensively, is creative play calling. I would absolutely call Lincoln, and I would say, "Come on, I got a lot more money. Let's go." Yeah, come coach the big boys. You get Baker back. Let's uh, let's go over the last two honorable mentions: Seahawks at the Lions minus two and a half. Uh, the Detroit sneaky, sneaky chance to be a good game. Yeah, sneaky chance to be a good game for sure. And that's why it's an honorable mention. Uh, over unders forty nine Sunday noon on Fox. Um, Look, it, it's two teams that look very similar. Seattle's defense is not bad this year. They're only giving up 19.5 points uh, uh, per game. Um, you know, I mean, the the rushing yards 
Like, both teams are giving up crazy rushing yards. Uh, Seattle's giving up 120 a but, game, 4.7. The Lions are rushing really uh, well. Yeah, the Lions are are really – like, they're averaging almost five yards a carry now. Man. Carry on Johnson. Johnson. Brother, like, Auburn you, is missing him. Uh, well, yeah, Auburn cannot <laughs> run the ball to save <laughs> their all. lives. And Detroit now has had a 100-yard rusher, like, two of the last three weeks. When they, when they went – umpteen years without having a 100-yard rusher, 800-yard rusher. Yeah, and carry-on is something else, man. Let, look, I understand LeGarrette Blunt down in the uh, down in the red zone. That's like, fine. That's, that's fine. fine, but carry Everybody's on got is, a place. Hey, carry-on Johnson is awesome. He's really good. And finally, last game, Monday night, 7.15 p.m. ESPN. You Patriots, minus 13.5 at the Bills. <laughs> Over-unders 44.5 is 13.5 enough points. Not even close, and the, the, the fact that this is a Monday night game is just rough. It really is rough. I mean, those guys are going to have a hard time filling three hours of football, plus the two hours of pregame that you're going to get for this. Now, maybe my arrogance is just going to fall all over myself and the Patriots do something stupid, but, man, I just can't see that happening. The, the most entertaining thing about this is Bill Belichick will go into the pregame like meetings or whatever, and he's going to talk about Derek Anderson like he is Joe Montana. <laughs> and he's going to make sure that everyone knows that this is the greatest quarterback they have. Because what he does every week, he, the, the team that they are playing is the best team in the country, and the Patriots have to fight and claw with their fingernails to figure out how to beat them. And, and maybe that's why they win all the time, even though they don't have the most talented rosters, because he prepares that way. It's kinda, Every week. It's kind of laughable when you hear him talk about some of these other players, though. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo averages 233 yards per game. Not good. They're just not uh, good at football. No. They uh, they average 11.6 points per game. They give up 25 points per game. Uh, they actually give up less points per game than uh, the New England does. Well, no. Their defense is real. Yeah. No, if they could, if they could score at all, they would actually be a competent football team. They would be in that middle mesh of – are these teams good? Are they not? I do agree with that. So. Um, it could. Uh, do you think the Pats could hit the forty-four and a half themselves for the over/under? I I don't I don't know I doubt that. I the, think the Bills' a, defense is pretty no, good. This is a divisional game. They're going to just try to get out of there with a win. That is Bills' mantra: is just get out with a W. He doesn't care how you do it. Would you take the over/under over forty-four? No. I don't think I would either. No. I don't think I would either. It would not shock me if the Bills don't score. Every week the Bills play. I mean, this past week they played the Colts, who have a terrible defense. They gave. A, they scored five. They scored five as five a baseball points. score. Yeah. They yeah, got, it is. They got five. No, no, no. They are not. They might not score. So I can't lay 44 when I don't know that the Patriots will do that. Okay, I'd probably take the under. All right, either way, you can get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button on the podcast. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, as always, we're giving you what you need to know to be a winner. Go put some action down on your favorite games down in Tunica. You can find information on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. That's going to wrap up our NFL big game previews for week number eight. 